Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now it's time to talk about the aftermath of the Ondo state governorship election, which various political figures have voiced their opinions on the conduct and outcome. Deputy Governor Loki Ayedatiwa called on opposition parties to join efforts in building a better Ondo state, emphasizing the need for unity and collaboration. However, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has expressed concerns over alleged vote buying, accusing the All Progressive Congress, APC, of deploying an estimated 35 billion naira for electoral manipulation. The PDP also criticized the overall conduct of the election, labeling it the worst election ever conducted, in court in the state. Additionally, discussions within the PDP pointed to the leadership of the party, with some arguing that National Chairman Yur Chair Ayu's absence was a key factor in the party's underperformance, while others, like spokesperson Kola Ologbondia, one, that the party's credibility and future could be at risk if Ayu's leadership remains intact. The political tension surrounding the election continues as accusations and calls for reforms grow louder. Now, joining us to discuss this is Okechuku Wangoma, his executive director of Rule of Law and Accountability Advocacy Center, RULAC. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so we're talking about the Ondo State Governorship election. It happened on Saturday, um, but I want to get your opinion about the election. So a lot of people are calling it the worst election in history, but I feel like that word has been used a lot of times. But from your own standpoint, from your own view, how did you see the election? Did you think it was a good election? It was conducted well by INEC? I just want to get your thoughts. Okay, thank you. Um... I was part of the Nigerian Civil Society election observation team that monitored the, observed the election in Ondo State. And um, of course, just like you said, um, after the Edo election, which came before Ondo, mm -hmm. we also had the, the, the losing party describe it as the worst election. Mm -hmm. um, so increasingly, elections have become contentious issues and uh, obviously seem not to meet the expectations of Nigerians. Uh, if you contrast um, Ondo with Edo before it, hmm. I, I think that the tension that preceded, the tension and threats, fears about uh, violence that preceded Edo, didn't, we didn't see it in Ondo. That was quiet, and the uh, Ondo election, the polit political environment was quite peaceful. Um, there wasn't, apart from isolated cases, uh, there wasn't so much violence. Uh, the election was held in a very peaceful atmosphere. But the the dark side of that election was the high level of vote threading. All the observers in the field reported that all the parties were involved in election vote buying and vote selling which has become the worrying aspects of elections in nigeria and of course this is a carryover not just from 2023 um, general election but also the edo election where it was so brazen it, it continues to you know increase and the worrisome aspect is that this election electoral crime is committed with security agencies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and agents yeah. standing by and are, are seeming to be helpless about it. Apart from an isolated case where the EFCC operatives were reported to have arrested some people carrying bags of money, most of the cases of election selling and buying went unchecked. And this, I think, is one aspect of election, the electoral process that INEC and security agencies need to look at closely and, and address. Mm. Okay, so I, I know that one of the things that was being said here was vote buy-in. In fact, um, you know, they were saying that most of, the, most of the banks did not have cash because, of course, all of this money was being used for the election. With that being said, right now, the president said, as already, you know, congratulated um, Ayida Tiwa as the current governor of Ondo, of Ondo State and, you know, has told the opposition to go to court. 
so right now isn't is are we not supposed to be looking at all of these intrigue cases like all of the nuances when it comes to an election why do we just go ahead and say go to court why is the judicial system now the one um to determine who wins and who loses an election yeah i mean you know impunity for ele electoral um violence you know votes voter suppression and all forms of electoral malpractices have become so entrenched and become so normalized in Nigeria that, um, of course, I'm sure you heard that after Edo, the leadership of the APC said that they were going to use the Edo templates mm. to capture Ondo, and such language tells you the attitude of our, our politicians. Mm. And so when they say go, when they say go to court, which ordinarily should be a correct thing to say in, in terms of saying if you want to seek redress for, you know, um, grievances relating to election, the proper thing would be to go to court uh, as, a, as a way of in, in line with the rule of law. But when they say this, they say it knowing that we can do what we want to do, go to court because the court itself has been captured. Uh, what, we are, what we are faced with in Nigeria is state capture capture of not just the legislature but the judiciary and so when they say go to court it's simply to say we will do what we want to do go to court and of course they know that going to court will make no meaning so it calls for urgent electoral reform but not, not just electoral reform but also political reform because what is happening in nigeria is that politics has been turned into uh, an organized crime hmm. organized crime in such a way that things are done with 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 uh, impunity. Now the reforms that INEC has introduced, even before 2023, have actually helped to reduce some forms of electoral malpractice. But it is not that these reforms are not working, but it is because the individuals that ought to implement these reforms have refused to implement them. For example, IREF, you know, um, uh, the bimodal. bimodal uh, you know, a uh, system. Mm. It ought to work, but it is simply because ANEC officials, a majority of whom are partisan people, you know that you know that some of the good people, excellent people we had in INEC as resident electoral commissioners were re removed and replaced yeah. by people who are card carry members of, of political parties. And so these are all part of the organized criminal attempt to capture the political system and make sure that the elections no longer count. Which mm. is why, and I needed to mention this. Voter apathy was also very prominent in this election, as it was in Edo. It is because people are beginning to lose faith in the election yeah. process and, and in democracy itself. And I think that this calls for urgent reform and urgent change of heart by our politicians, particularly mm. the president. Mm. So with that being said, how do you think it changes the political landscape in, in Nigeria, especially when it comes to election? Because you just spoke about voter apathy, where a lot of people are just, they're not just even motivated or encouraged to go out to vote. So uh, because they kind of know that at the end of the day, maybe my vote doesn't count because you will still go to court or you will still declare whoever you think is the winner as a winner. And it might not really reflect my own choice or the choice of the people. So how do you think this affects the political landscape in Nigeria as a whole? Yeah, you see, one of the positive developments that we witnessed during the 2023 election was youth, youth interest, youth involvement yes, yes. in politics. You saw yes, how participation. people became interested, you know. Mm -hmm. But after what happened in that, after what happened in that election, the violence, the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the use of violence to suppress votes, vote buying, the fact mm -hmm. that there were obvious cases of electoral malpractice. For example, I mean, Lagos stood out where people were targeted and prevented from voting because of where they come from. Yeah. In River State, where violence, where violence was used to declare the wrong result. At, at least I'm saying this because I know mm -hmm. that uh, Premium Times had done a report which yeah. indicated that the, the result in, 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 in River State did not reflect just as in, in, in many places. Mm -hmm. Now, with this development, a lot of young people have... Th that's, that's, you know, resurgence of youth interest in politics seems mm -hmm. to be winning. Yeah. They are saying, why do, we, why do we need to bother to come mm -hmm. out when we know that at the end of the day, our votes will not count? So, 
and we might even be intimidated. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. So I think that I think that I think that the president should lead in this effort to demonstrate genuine commitment to electoral reform, ensure that election becomes a means by which the people can voice their preferences mm -hmm. so that people will vote and their votes will count and not yeah. that people will come out where's their time and vote and then they they, they announce whatever they want to announce mm -hmm. we need to demo, our democracy rests on this electoral our and reforming our electoral process because mm -hmm. it is the means by which we determine who lives in this country it's a means by which if citizens can hold government elected people accountable yeah in a situation where votes don't count it means that people will continue to behave the way they they, they have and that, that is why our development is is impeded development is impeded in this country there is complete loss of faith and lot of interest in democracy and i think that this is a dangerous development that needs to be addressed as i said earlier mm, yeah because um, a lot of people now are even you know asking for a military regime asking for a parliamentary system of government you know just looking for other alternatives because they feel like this current one we're in is not working but if we're staying on electoral processes of course INEC is the regulatory body if i can call it that they're the ones who um you know ensure that elections are being held and however it goes it's dependent on INEC but if you're looking at certain um irregularities or logistical issues how would you say INEC has performed so far so with regards to um i mean um movement of movement and deployment of electoral materials and, and personnel what the witness in ondo was that INEC was rated rated high among all the different election observation you know you know groups polls opened on time materials were de de delivered on time and um generally security agents agents uh, who were involved in ele ele election security we are also rated to have performed. Um, they they were rated to have been um, polite and professional. But the 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 the, the, the bad side was that they were not able to prevent crimes that were committed. You know, in their presence, uh, we had some of them say that the person in charge at the police unit is the presiding officer. That unless the presiding officer calls the attention to starting electoral crime like like people selling and buying votes that they cannot do anything but i think that this is not correct the truth is that the security agency especially the police are set up and charged to detect and prevent crime so when they see crime they don't need to be uh, to they don't need to say our attention need to be caught because when they arrest and molest young people who are carrying laptops searching their phones they don't wait for anybody to call their attention so when they witness you know wrong things being done at um, at polling you know at, at at voting centers during elections they need to prevent it and this is why and it is because nobody is arrested and held to account for committing this crime that they continue to happen election after after election so we we need to address this problem of vote buying and security agencies appearing to be helpless when this is, when these crimes are committed in their presence the fact that, I mean, INEC conducted this election, and then in cases whereby um, vote buying has been done, and they can clearly see maybe all of those little um, nuances or intricacies that has happened, shouldn't that en en ensure that um, whatever, whatever, who or whoever is going to emerge as winner, um, that should be taken into, uh, into account? Are we not supposed to nullify such votes? instead of just declaring um, someone the winner? Yeah, you know, um, impunity is the consequence of uh, lack of accountability. So when people co commit crime and they're not held to account, they, they seem to be emboldened to continue to do it. And that is why we keep seeing vote buying over and over again. And unfortunately, um, I, I know I'm aware that the INEC regulations also permit that when, when there are... Uh, when when there is widespread complaint over a particular e election you know results from a particular u u unit i know has an obligation to review such complaints with a view to resolving whatever it is before declaring uh, you know results but what we find is that in, in spite of 
overwhelming complaints about certain locations where people would either say elections were not held or elections were disrupted. Rather than review, and it goes ahead to declare result. And, and once they do, it is only the courts that can reverse. But unfortunately, again, as you know, people, Nigerians, are, most Nigerians have lost confidence in the in, in, in the judiciary uh, to the extent that uh, they now say it is uh, like some people were saying on the site, and some people wrote um, the judiciary decides, which means that yes, people can vote, but then it, uh, it, it would then be left for the the the, the courts. To decide what you know who 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 is the actual person elected, you know. So I think that this calls for urgent reform, not just of our judiciary. We've been talking about need for electoral reform, but also judicial reform, so that the process of appointing people into judiciary, appointing people as judges, there has to be a transparent, rigorous, and competitive means of the of appointing people who are fit and honorable into the judicial system we our judiciary is going too low and i think that this is not good for our democracy in any democracy where the judiciary is is failing and people have lost confidence that that then that is not a democracy because it's it is said to be the last hope of the common man yeah. so so my point then is that if people if people continue to sell their votes and buy votes and nobody's arrested and prosecuted the impunity will continue, right. and where the courts courts cannot be relied to give fair and uh, fair and you know impartial judgment, judgment regarding electoral disputes, then this will continue to diminish uh, our democracy. And this is why people, unfortunately, are calling for military rule. Military rule is, is not is, is not the best way to go. But people are frustrated, and this should be mm. a wake up call to our, our our leaders to deliver good good governance mm. and make sure that democracy works for our people so that they don't have to you know think about going back from where we are coming from yeah. you know, which is military rule yeah I, I think i think that is so apt because to be honest everybody just wants good governance if we have a nigeria that is working I don't think we'll be crying or wanting to go out to protest or the people who are um, in court jackpying, moving out of the country will want to move. If things were working, if we had a Absolutely. system that was working and, and if we had elections that reflected, you know, the minds of the people, the choices of the people, we'll all obviously put our hands in the plow and work together. But sadly, that's not the case and people are looking for alternatives. But what do we do right now is ensuring that um, we just need to do what is right for the people, by the people, and that's what democracy is all about, instead of diminishing our democracy. Um, now, what is the future of, you know, our whole pol uh, political landscape, electoral process in Nigeria? What are the lessons that we can take from this election? Of course, on the um, Edo, Edo election happened. Um, we saw the whole apathy, um, voter apathy. We saw vote buy-in. We saw, you know, crime that was being committed. And then the Ondo election has happened. We're still seeing that as well. And of course, there's going to be a trend because if we let it happen, it will continue to happen. So what are some lessons you think we can also take from this for future references to ensure that we have a better electoral system in Nigeria? I think that the urgent need for electoral reform has come once again to the fore. Mm. But like I said, you know, it, it goes beyond electoral reform, but also political reform. And, I, and, and when I say political reform, I'm talking about reforming our entire political system, mm. realizing that politics is about service to the people. But what it has turned to in Nigeria, as I said earlier, is that politics in Nigeria is now an organized crime. Mm. where politicians believe that they can do whatever they want to do and then ask people to go to court. So the attitude of, you know, you know, um, the, the, even the language that our politicians use, it gives you a glimpse into their mindset when they, when they talk about capture. You know, it means they don't care about the will of the people. They don't care about how the people vote. Uh, all they need to do, I mean, the election has become... Um, just um, a routine, a normal thing, you know, just to 
fulfill all righteousness at the end of the day they do what they want to do with the with the outcome so both the process and the outcome of, of elections must be credible and deliver credible outcomes that reflect the will of the people nigerians need to remain vigilant and continue to call for political reform and i mean the fact that every now and then citizens come out and protest asking for good governance asking for you know um embarking on anti-poverty what i think we just lost uh, mr okichuku's audio but anyways, this is how much we can take on this segment right now. We've been speaking with Okichuku Wagoma, he's the Executive Director of Rule of Law and Accountability Advocacy Center, RULAC. And we've just been talking about the aftermath of the Ondo State Governorship election. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll talk about the bill to exempt companies from tax for debate next week. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We sincerely apologize for that um, breaking transmission. We wanted to just connect with our guests, but we've been having some audio issues. Anyways, we'll ensure that we bring them back um, next time. And what we wanted to speak about was the bill to exempt companies from tax, which is um, scheduled for debate next week. Anyways, this is where we have to wrap it up on the show today, sadly. Um, it's been my pleasure, you know, just having the breakfast with you. My name is Rome Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.